You've heard the name before, Surfshark. What do they do? VPNs, virtual private network. It is pretty much everywhere because it takes you everywhere. But this is the best one. This is by far the best one. And it's not only because of the great offer that they give you, which by the way is, and I always have to write this down because it sounds untrue. If you enter promo code Geordie, you get 83% off and three months free. They're basically giving away VPN. You have a VPN. You have a VPN. You have a VPN. You know my favorite bit about it? Go on. You know with other VPNs, you yeah. kind of need to sign up for one thing, one right. device. Right. This one, all your devices. Anywhere. Cover Reuse it. So I, you're saying you can have it on this, this, and this? All of them. Right. All of them. Nice and easy. Good yeah. for you. Uh, if you want to jump on American Netflix, you can do that. Yeah. Spanish, French, you can do that. You're going abroad, a lot of you lot. You're going to Ibiza. Oh, I want to keep in touch Ooh. and see what's getting shown on BBC yeah, yeah, while I'm away. It's on the ambulance. Get, get yourself yeah. on the VPN. You can oh, watch anything. I want to use the internet just like in England. When we go away, everything's in Spanish. Yeah. Three days you've been out there and you're already wanting to know what the fuck's been going on at home. Don't slag off the customers, though. Because yeah, yeah. Well, those people sign, are the people who need up. it. That's all need... I'm... If you want to be like that, then just sign up. What's that, my love? You want 83% off and three months for free? Just use code Geordie. It's not hard. There you go. Use the link down there as well because it sort of lets them know that we sent you. Yeah, that's the most important important bit. It's kind of the key to this. Sign so, up using yeah. our stuff. Mm, down you go. Boom. Get down. So, while you're down there. Yeah. While you're down there. Click on the click link. Click the link. That's the important bit. Yeah. So Surfshark, <laughs> they sponsor True News and they keep it coming. En en enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy. And enjoy True News. Yeah. You're welcome. It's, it's, a like it's a good one. Surfshark. It's a good one. Good. Whoever the fuck Jake Paul is, he's fighting a very famous fighter in whoever the fuck Tyrone Woodley is. These two guys are going to clash heads and butt fists at some points in the next couple of months. But before that, they're going to do a lot of talking. With robots! The robot's back. The robot's back. And that's probably the best part of the press conference, isn't it? Imagine if all the time, say something positive about yourself and I'll be the robot. I think I've got great hair. And, uh, kind of... Handsome. That's what this robot does. Do you remember in the last press conference when Jake dedicated it to one of his trainers who had deceased? As some of you guys know, uh, my security guard passed away. And then the robot was just sort of in the background going, yeah, it's bit, man. It's a bit strange, isn't it? Yeah. He's dead. Ladies and gents, Tyron Woodley. Sorry, Tyron. Tyron, Tyron. Tyron, Tyrone. It's not Tyrone. It's not because it's Tyrone would be with an E. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of people tend to say Tyrone to annoy him. To trigger him. It's like him calling him like Jackie Paul. Tyron Woodley, he wants me a rap song called I'll Beat Your Ass and now they're playing it. Much more common in North America that sports stars cross over into the rap game. Loads of basketball players, loads of NFL players. Every now and again, they just go, oh, I've got a mixtape. And you're like, I'm not interested. Beat your ass in real life. Beat your ass on TV. So I'll beat your ass in real life. I'll beat your ass on TV. He tried to start the rap career while he was champion. Right. The second that happened, he lost four fights in a row. Right. So maybe just stop with the music. Nine, six and one in the UFC, making his boxing debut on August 29th, the chosen one. Is this man doing a really bad impression of a man on download internet? It's embarrassing. This man, a YouTube social media star who has all of a sudden turned himself into a pugilistic puncher. He's known as the problem child. Could you look any more like, oh, Okay. He looks like he's giving a eulogy. He's like, ladies and gents. <sighs> this is your captain speaking. We're about to hit some turbulence. Gen I'm sorry. Whatever, I'm belt up. Genuinely, this is, it's terrible. And I thought with Showtime, things were going to level up a bit. You think Showtime? You go, Showtime, you know? This guy behind the scene goes, no time. Ladies and gents, Jake Paul. He's awful, this guy. I like his jacket. It's a little big. It's a bit like they've had the jacket for the actual guy who should have been doing this job. <laughs> you get it. And then they've literally thrown it on him and went, yeah, it kind of fits. That's why he's looking off to the side, because they're going, you better fucking nail this. He, he keeps looking like, uh, is, that, he's going, is that all right? Oh. He's the janitor and <laughs> he's locked out here. They basically went, go on, we'll try him out. He's that guy who wondered. Do you know him. what I mean? Like, yeah. they, they, they see Goodwill hunting. They thought, mm -hmm. what harm could it do? Sure. And join by the problem bot. <laughs> Because you guys, you know, had a private photo shoot 
you know, there was no media there. <laughs> As is the nature of privacy. I'm here to watch Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley put on a show, right? <laughs> This guy's explaining the nature of privacy. What's happening is I'm, I'm, my, my attention's actually being taken away from what I was interested in. By problem and, presenter. And I'm just <laughs> problem presenter, yeah. But in that private photo shoot, you guys had a chance to you know, kind of face off, look at it one another. It's, it's generally what a face off is. <laughs> <laughs> this this is, guy. This guy's unbelievable. They should pair him up with Anthony Joshua, AKA Anthony Joshua. Uh, MSG, AKA Madison Square Gardens. And in that photo shoot, you said during the face off, quote, quote, <laughs> he now reads this. This, is this guy is so fucking terrible. It is doing my head in. The zone, showtime, UFC, any of you lot. How, was, how am I unemployed by you lot? You're really what do I have to do? Are I you... cannot be worse than this. I don't have the jacket. Is that what it it's is? The jacket, yeah. It's the jacket. And also you're really problematic to work with. It's the jacket. I saw it deep in his soul that he knew this right hand was going to crack him in his skull. You still stand by that? No, I've changed my mind. I'm actually losing the fight now. <laughs> the hell kind of question is that? Yeah, I've thought about it. Now I've seen him up close. He's quite a big guy. I yeah. think I'm going to struggle here. I hadn't done my research before, and I've just discovered Tyron Woodley, a fighter. Tyron, let me ask you this. Because you told the boxing scene, you're going to knock Jake out in three rounds. Say a quote. Oh, God, why do you keep quoting them back to themselves? Say a quote. They're gassing him up. You've got power. He's old. He ain't want to fight in a million years. I, Whose quote is I, this? I, literally, he's being so non-specific about which person said what. You just don't know. This guy is, I mean this, the worst <laughs> moderator we've ever seen. Whoa. Shannon Briggs was worse. Let's go, champ. Shannon was better. I'm going to F him up. You still stand by that? Stop asking them if they stand by words they've said. Literally. Neither of these men are backing down. They're the, literally being paid you're, not you're to. You're here to get sound bites yeah. out of them that can be then used later in trailers. Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to be asking them questions to get these out of them. You're literally saying the words for them, you fucking idiot. I mean, look at my resume. Brilliant. Okay, he's transitioning out of fighting. He's now bringing the resume into the room. SAT score was pretty good here in your resume. Okay, went off to be a fighter. See, that didn't go so well. You did get to a champion at some point, though. But then you started, you put down here, uh, your interests, rapping. Yeah, so okay. it's not really a hobby that we're looking to employ, but yeah. we'll keep you on file. So many people come up to me on a day-to-day -day basis. You got to knock him the fuck out. I'm like, damn, what this dude did to everybody? That, that's the exact pressure that's going to crack you on fight night. Jake is really good at this, isn't he? Plays it smart. You have never been in a fight like this, and Ever, you know right? that the whole MMA community Robbie is Lawler, counting Carlos on Condit, you. Robbie Lawler, Carlos Condit, Darren I've who, never been in never, a fight like Don't know who the fuck those guys are. It's Clever response from Jake, but definitely a lie. Yeah, he yeah, definitely he knows. Kn he knows who they are, but in that moment, he can't acknowledge anything that Tyron is using to build his credibility. Right, He's right. got to be like, who are they? You know what I mean? Yeah, this is but the reality reality is, when Tyron Woodley beat Darren Till in a title fight, that was the same year Jake Paul started learning how to box. That shows the progression of Jake Paul in a short space of time. Yes, Tyron Woodley's on the decline a little bit, but is still a force to be reckoned with. I see. So, just to get serious for a second, what Jake Paul is attempting to do here, all right, yes, Tyron Woodley is a slightly smaller man, but the fact of the matter is, he's been fighting so much longer, and obviously, yes, it's going to be pure boxing, whereas Tyron Woodley comes from MMA, but this would be a monumental achievement for a YouTuber in a few years to take on a guy who, when he started, was the champion of the world. Mendel. Fight this is, is a good. more dangerous fight, without doubt, than what Floyd Mayweather was for yeah. Logan Paul, because oh, yeah. the power Tyron Woodley has in his hands is serious. That like, It's a, a good shot, and it's good night, and you're a meme. When you lost to all of those guys, you had built-in excuses. When, oh, when they have were the you best. fought anybody Oh, they caliber. were the best. What happens when you lose to when Jake have Paul? You fought it's a good point by Jake in that when when Tyron Woodley was losing those high-level UFC fights, he could literally say, I'm, be I'm getting beat by top five in the world individuals. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Whereas to lose to Jake Paul, it's a different kind of pressure. But did he Mentally, lose? Mentally, your credibility is going to take a hell of a knock. Right now, Tyron Woodley is looked upon by many as top three welterweights of all time, by the way, in MMA. Mm. If he then goes and loses to Jake Paul, people are just not going to look at him the same way ever again. Tyron? You know, one of the things we saw on social media is that you show some pictures of you training with Floyd Mayweather. Um, can you tell us how those sessions went? You've trained with Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, horrible, actually. I was feeling a bit under weather that day, so I didn't pick up much stuff while I was in the gym. What do you expect him to say from here? Um, can you tell us 
how those sessions went, and did he give you maybe some some tricks? Some tricks. Well, I just sort of took the book juggling. Yeah, I'm gonna basically get down, do ten what? press ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually gonna juggle the gloves, mm. put them back on the hands, and then knock him out. You're bouncing around coaches like you do baby mamas. How many kids you got now? This is going well. You're a 39 year old man yeah. who's pulling hey, up in week. He looks like a fertile guy. Uh, you bought a used Bentley. That's a oh. really good diss. There's nothing wrong with a used Bentley, all right? That's First start. True. Okay, yeah. I've, I've had one. We also know they're also fucking expensive. So believe if you want me. a new Bentley, believe me, those will wipe you out. You want a used one? Still wipes well, you out. It's a lot like a beautiful woman. It really doesn't matter who's who, been who been. had it first. It's who's got it now, bitch. I you know what I'm I saying? Don't, I don't know if I concur. You know I've seen it on your Instagram. You bought a used Bentley. Bentley my with biggest your money. flex is my key. You bought I know. a used Bentley That's with his my money. biggest flex. The, he has the problem. Tyron Woodley is playing the Jake Paul game. When you do that, it's Jake Paul's game, so he's going to win. Yeah. What Tyron should have done is try to old man him, big brother him, and be like, I'm not here to fuck around with you. You yeah. know, I'm going to kick the shit out of you and be done with it. That's what he should have been. But he, he's fighting fire with fire, and this is what Jake does. It's to a point now where, and this is a known thing, Conor McGregor has even been copying Jake Paul's stuff. A lot of people... Uh, originally called Jake a Conor McGregor copycat right. but now the whole your girl is in my DM right. it's like all of the sort of type of shit Conor's been coming out with it's straight out of the Jake Paul playbook I know people probably won't like to hear that but a lot of people have noticed it it ain't just me it's, yeah. it's common knowledge now 18 months ago when I said I wanted to fight Conor people laughed at me now I'm laughing at Conor with a broken ankle sitting there in the octagon and he needs Jake Paul more than more than I need him. On the one hand, Conor McGregor's last pay-per-view just did 1.8 million buys, which is the second in UFC history, only to his fight with Khabib, which is number one. Conor's still selling way more pay-per-views than any other fighter out there. You know, Floyd's last fight definitely didn't do 1.8 million with Logan. Conor's number one at selling pay-per-views right now. No shit. However, Conor's next fight, allegedly against Dustin Poirier, probably wouldn't do that kind of business because most people feel like they've got their conclusion from that trilogy. Whereas, Jake Paul and Conor McGregor hyping a fight up would be mayhem. They'd probably do two million pay-per-view buys. In a sense, Conor and Jake would do great business together. Doesn't mean either of them need each other, though. Right. But I like where he's going with this. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Speaking of Conor McGregor, just to quickly skip over to this, Jake had a chain made of Conor McGregor sleeping. He's got NyQuil in his hand. He's, he's called it Sleepy McGregor. 100 grand he spent. This, this cost 100 grand. That. Mm, it's got diamonds on the pants. Hey, McGregor, you better win tonight, otherwise your career is over. And if you lose, that 50 million dollar bet I gave you won't be on the table anymore. So don't choke like you normally do. Sleepy McGregor, don't go night night. Nightquil McGregor, fucking bitch. As we know now, McGregor did lose the fight and Jake then offered the chain as a gift to Dustin Poirier who accepted. Jake then replied, uh, do you want me to snap the leg off or do you want to do it yourself? Wow, okay. And then I think Dustin's going to auction it off for his charity. Right, that's a good idea. Yeah, so in a way, as much as it's probably annoying the hell out of McGregor, it's making money for the people who need it. I was going to say, do you expect there may be one and possibly two Paul brothers ringside also, cage side? I couldn't care about them two dingbats. Do you, so there's no, you don't see any future where you box either of those two? I don't, I don't see so, but you know, never say never. You know, I mean, if they're going to keep competing and whatnot, who knows? But dingbats to tell them. What I like about McGregor there is he's on an Aussie show and he's using terminology that they'd be familiar with. Right, smart, Spe yeah. People yeah. from all walks of life, he can he, talk to anyone. Prince or pauper, yeah. Dingbat, when a dingo mates with a bat. Right. Ding bat. COVID. We are taking you very seriously, but anything that you bring to the ring, it just won't matter. You can Three up. rounds. I think we're going to see a lot more of Jake's game and how he actually boxes, because pretty much the last few fights have just been him laying people out pretty quick. Trick. Whereas Tyron's going to have a lot of speed, a lot of explosive power, and it's not going to be just as simple as throw the one, two, and watch the guy go down. But I think Jake Paul's power is highly underestimated. When you watch how he throws for his weight class, I think he hits a lot harder than what he should do. And with Tyron being a smaller guy, I don't know if he'll be able to take that kind of power. If I beat you, you have to get I Love Jake Paul tattooed on you. But but if you beat me, I get I Love Tyrone Woodley tattooed on me. And you have to post it on your Instagram feed. Deal or no deal? Bet. Deal or no deal? Deal. Can we, can we shake on it? One thing McGregor did early on, which he has sort of lost his way of doing, is ramping the pressure up on his opponent. Mm -hmm. No matter what little things he can get his opponent to, to agree to, to, to feel like this is bigger than what 
I'm used to to feel the pressure. It's not about the tattoo. It's Jake trying to go. The stakes are higher. The higher, as, as high as possible, because he knows he is going to be fine with that. He doesn't feel the way a normal person feels under pressure yeah. because he's grown up around cameras, and this is his way of just getting so much pressure on Tyron Woodley. He caves. He he goes along with it. What he should have said was, "You're a little fucking boy, and I ain't getting fucking tattoos like this shit. I'm just going to knock you." Out. But he he plays the game because he doesn't want to be seen to be a bottle job but it's, it's that's the problem you're being childish you're, yeah you don't realize he's, he's luring him in you can't old man someone when you're agreeing to get matching tattoos and shit right, like, yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah which they actually should do i think that's i think you should just get each other's sort of name on anyway uh, on the ring finger the ring you know that'd be I mean? lovely that'd be oh, really nice you, imagine just towards the end when they're really sweaty and covered in each other's blood and then yeah. all of a sudden they go to a cuddle and embrace lady in red they just start kissing gorgeous love that moment someone else who's transitioned from social media to fighting this week and done it very very successfully addison ray we all know who that is we we don't we don't know who I, I, i've heard the name i what? thought that i thought they did cars does she not like used to uh fuck some of those big name youtubers I, I think she's got her own career thank you very much brian five million subs hey y'all it's addison ray back with another youtube video i get the yeah, point now right. she's okay. just you know your everyday youtuber girl but then she got a gig with ufc i studied broadcast journalism in college for three whole months to prepare for this moment she studied hard for three months she was so good they gave her the whole degree in three months that should have taken her five years. Did they keep her or did they suck her? Don't think they kept. Didn't go They've well. Kept They've right. kept her. Oh. Oh, they got rid of her. Oh, they got rid. It's fair to say, though, that three months did not prepare her well because UFC didn't even release some of the footage. However, someone else did get footage of her interviewing Dustin Poirier. The most excited is go out there, get a win, keep this career moving forward and go get that goal. Awesome, that's amazing. I know when I'm at a fight, I want <laughs> I want Joe Rogan post fight to go awesome, awesome. That's amazing. I actually feel sorry for her now. She's been sacked so for doing what yeah. she was brought in to do. She right. was brought in to look pretty, to ask questions. Right. She's doing both of those right now. Mm, her answer to the question is not great. That's amazing. But that's what she, who she is. Like in fighting entertainment, there many companies, the Zone, Sky Sports, UFC, have a select few women who clearly aren't lifelong fight fans who are brought in to offer something else to the broadcast right. and sometimes you need a presenter who was more of a an overall sports presenter rather than the the fight analyst not everyone on a on a on a broadcast has to be a, a professional fight analyst because that's why you've got pro fighters there like but us i i feel like you know it, it's a bit harsh on her just because she's a youtuber like maybe they got this wrong yeah i i, I do but she's just been a bit humiliated for I, being what she is and be, that, yeah and that's it's a bit sad. That's the problem though, Brian. That's the cocktail of things. So the cocktail of things is the money she will have received for this. The fact that she then bragged about not having the qualification, sort of rubbing it in other people's but, faces. But this is the thing. 99% of people who present have not got journalist qualifications. But there are people out there who've put in the work, despite not having qualifications from a university, to learn how to be a journalist. And but they don't look like that. They don't look like that. And let's be honest, looking good on camera is part of the job. We've which is probably why I've not been hired yet. I must admit, I don't look of the dress i think the dress could have been a better color i think yellow would have been better on her for a start or yeah, it would have brought your cheeks or, out or red or well yeah let's hope yeah <laughs> <laughs> The weekend didn't get much better for her because good friend of the UFC... He's a good friend of Dana White, actually. Yes, and uh, in many people's hearts, still the American president. Donald Trump popped by. Here's Addison Rae introducing herself as if she's five. Hey buddy, get the fuck out of the way, man. I'm Addison. <laughs> nice to meet you. I have to say hi. Hello. Say buddy, you know? Nice to meet you. Say buddy, you know? <laughs> Addison Rae exposed. That is a weird one, isn't it? So nice to meet you. Donald Trump. Are you okay, Addison? She's just harmless, isn't she, though? What would you do? if you saw an ex-American president at the UFC? Probably punch them and say, stop killing kids and broad. Okay, so let's just take you through a quick timeline of racism here in the UK. Yeah, that's right. It still exists in 2021 within these shores, as much as there are some people who tried to deny it. Ultimately, don't worry, no one's calling you a racist, unless you are a racist, at which point I'm calling you a racist. There was a lot of racist backlash against a couple of the England guys. Well, and... uh, the three of the England players uh, missed penalties and they happen to be black. Yeah. And of course... Dickheads will put that down to their skin colour and use it against them. So, a Marcus Rashford... A man who has done an insanely good amount for this country as a young footballer whose responsibility it is solely to score goals for Manchester United felt like he needed...
needed to get involved with the community to help the children get you know free school meals and all that just an all round great guy yeah um, and using his platform for exactly the right absolutely. things absolutely he's a, he, he, he's a council estate hero to me come good uh, and um, you know there's a mural of him which was defaced in Manchester the community have turned out and went over what was written with loads of messages of goodwill to Marcus and loads of thank you and support for him, which is lovely. And it, it just shows that, you know, the tiny minority of, of twats who think that that sort of attitude is all right will be overcome by the good or not even good just decent proper you know it shouldn't even be considered good to not be racist it should just be considered normal what we seen was a lot of day drinking which then made a lot of racists feel very comfortable there was videos going out there was tweets going out so and many a lot of them have been exposed and and i'm glad but at the same time it's awful these black players had to read and say some of those things and feel the way it made them feel and of all people at the start of the tournament when the players wanted support for what they were doing as a gesture to stand against racism they got no support from boris johnson but now it's trendy now people are seeing these black players as victims who wants to be the superman boris johnson boris johnson you've come in to save people again you've really got your timing down again boris thanks well, well done boris you've clearly learned your lessons from the past the same guy in the past who referenced watermelon smiles and piccaninnies in some of his own articles uh, when referring to black people and not long ago he called muslim women who wear a certain garment which covers all of their face bank robbers and post boxes oh that's awkward because i don't think boris based on your record you're going to be able to go to the game soon you and your ministers have stoked division over footballers taking the knee, saying it was just your politics, saying it was fans' choice to boo the team. And going back, there is further evidence of this divisive politics and language from you, be it describing Muslim women in veils as letterboxes or bank robbers or indeed African people as pickanannies with watermelon smiles. Do you know when like you're getting a dressing down from your parents and you sort of you're looking down and you're like and he, he's sort of acting as if nothing's happening. Did I say that? Yeah like to be a, a, a leader not even a good leader acknowledging where you've gone wrong is like A, B, C you know what I mean very basic. Being extremely clear. The way he's just being childish and sort of uh, Ooh, just must just Must make an oh, oh, eggs add eggs to the shopping cheese, list cheese yes. bacon for many people your own record personally undermines your image as a unifying prime minister what are you going to do to change that well thanks uh, beth obviously i uh, you know i reject that doesn't matter if you reject it you have said some stupid shit in the past next time you have an argument with your partner and they go you did go out all night and get drunk you came home you threw up on the carpet and you came into bed and you threw up there as well that There's... is exactly what happened boris. No, well no i reject that well you can reject that all you want boris it's fucking true uh, but we've got to go further and we're going to use the online harms bill to ensure that the the big internet uh, companies the uh, the social media platforms uh, that uh, allow uh, race hate facebook and twitter and snapchat and instagram and i love that all the racists are like but well, he didn't say tiktok so yeah exactly yeah. i'm off to that i'll be dancing while calling everyone the n-word right. so wow. champion that's unbelievable huh? at the huh? same time boris said it was all right yeah he didn't say tiktok he, he, that's a good point yeah he didn't or youtube one of the weirdest titles you've ever shown me british youtuber becomes korean via surgery absolutely now i'm not one to judge so i'm just going to open-mindedly except what he says. This is British YouTuber. I get the feeling I might be upsetting him there. Ollie London, a classically Korean name. Something that's been like on my mind for a long time and I've been very confused about how I identify. I've been very, very confused. And you know, I've seen a lot of other people online that have come out and been very brave about it. Mm, the LGBT community is crying out what for the, this. What, what, what the fuck is going on Well, here? this guy's coming out. I think he's gay. And shared their story about how they identify their gender, their pronouns, etc. So absolutely, so. yeah. Gender is very difficult to identify mm -hmm. right now, and we're Wait, exploring what, what it. The a, no, come on now, Brian. Don't be close-minded towards someone who identifies as well. He's going to be one of them. My pronouns are they, them, Korean, Jimin. 
because I know a lot of people don't understand me, but I do identify as Korean. I'm sorry, you what, sorry? You identify as what? You know, I've taken courage from these incredibly brave um, people and it is Pride Month at the moment, so, you know, I thought this was the best time to do it. Korean Pride. It's Korean Pride Month. We've always said it. We've always thought it. And I do look Korean now. I do feel Korean. I do look Korean. <laughs> That. That's my favorite bit of the whole video. That's the best bit of the video so far. I look Korean now. Why? Got the eyes. I don't identify as British, so please don't refer to me, any media or anyone online as British. See, I told you I would have upset him there. I said British YouTuber at the you've, beginning, you've, didn't I? You've, you've dead nationality. Um. Uh, yeah, that's so true. Because I, I identify as Korean. That's just my culture. That's my home country. Yeah, I've just adopted that culture, and that I've just decided I'm just Korean now. This is the thing, right? You know, back in the day when I first discovered, like, rap music, and, I, and I'd hear them, like, rapping about they were from Compton. Right. They'd be a little bit of me, but that'd be cool. Oh, I've struggled it, as well it, at some point. It would be cool to be from Compton. Right. But I'm not. I'm from Newcastle. Yes. And I've got to accept that. Yeah. Because that is reality. That's exactly how I look now. He keeps telling us that's exactly how I look that, now. If, if, there's, if there's one thing I like to do is just to tell people how I look so that <laughs> even though they can see me, yeah. I need to let them know what they're looking for. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Look at the eyes. Korean. This guy is like, uh, it's like driving around in a Corsa and being like, it might have Corsa on it, but it identifies as a Lambo. My two bed semi-detached actually now identifies as a mansion. I finally had the courage. I've undergone my um, racial... Uh, can't think of the word, transitional surgery. He's but a when, Korean person picking up English. I, this I, is so true. I, 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 I do appreciate that he's talking so much shit that even he can't even fathom <laughs> what the fuck has gone <laughs> through. My racial... <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Hodgepodge. Transition whatever the, and surgery. I, and as you'll observe, I'm now Korean. And correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, there's more to being Korean than getting your eyes done. Oh, absolutely the, not, Brian. I, I, no. You know, it's like one of my pals getting a tan because he works on a building site and going, yeah, I'm Spanish now. This Pedro is, Manuel. This is the thing, though, right? With this guy, he's had 18 plastic surgeries. None of them seemingly successful. His nose has crumbled to bits. Like, he's far too young to be having a facelift, so it looks ridiculous. None of these bits match. It looks like someone's playing and, Mr. And, Potato and, Head. And on, on the off chance he sees this, I urge him to seek serious mental health um, help because there is a clear addiction to plastic surgery going on for a start, let alone when you're coming out with <coughs> nonsensical ideas like being transracial or whatever else. Who is around you? When you go in for, I don't know, let's say your third or fourth surgery that is clearly not necessary at such a young age, surely someone has to put his hand, hand on them and go, look, stop what you're doing. 18! I get it. You like Korean culture. Be a fan. Be a Fun. Exactly. Listen to Dr. Dre if you want to, you know, embrace the culture of, you know, California. Yeah, exactly. Be a fan. If you want to go there, visit, get yourself across. Yeah. You don't all of a sudden start having surgery to make yourself look like Dr. Dre. Yeah. And not only that, you don't go, hey, we've all had the same experience here, am I right? Come Homies. From yeah, exactly. Because when you come from what? <laughs> It's, it's just weird. And um, I finally have the Korean look, so I'm actually really happy. You look at these Korean people, right? Right. Some, some attractive looking people, you know? Good, handsome men, pretty women, all right. of that good stuff. And then him, down the bottom here. Right. You can see him. He's there right he there. Is. He's there right. he is. Do you know how I can point him out immediately? Because yeah. he looks nothing like them! Yeah. Surely, if I'm Korean, I'm offended by this. He's walking into a room of Korean people and they've gone, All right, mate. Ah, you're right. Good all to right. see you, Ollie. He goes, Uh uh, Jimin. Got the eyes. And got they the go, eyes, you got the was, sorry? This is mental. The, well, uh, that's the thing. They have had him on this morning, and I believe... Oh, of course. Morning. Is there anything this morning will not prostitute for views, by the way? Ollie London, who identifies as non-binary, says they've secretly spent many years feeling trapped in the wrong body. He's very smart, because what he's done is he's wrapped up the non-binary thing with the Korean thing. What he's trying to do is hide behind how sensitive people are around being non-binary. Correct. And, you know, and, and being misgendered and all of this sort of stuff and attached being Korean to that as well. Yeah. They're not the same thing. No. I can think it's absolutely fair that you don't feel like a male or female, but think it's mental that you think you're Korean. That's absolutely doable. You're, you're not going to get me on that one. Right, but he's You're trying. not going to get me on that he one. He did try. Well, last month, the British-born social media star underwent what Ollie has called racial transition surgery and announced... Oh. Notice how Phil goes... What Ollie, what Ollie, is, Ollie called. is called. <laughs> what we call bollocks, the, Ollie the, called This is him sort of winking to the audience going, we've got another freak on. 
one, this will be a laugh for you. I understand the hypocrisy that we're covering this, but at the same time, we've not invited the guy over to basically point and laugh at him. Well, this has prompted quite a big reaction around the world, and Ollie joins us now to tell us more. Ollie, welcome. It's lovely to see you this morning. Thank you. As you see, the surgery went oh, perfectly. Oh, no, he's not going to do the hand gesture. Don't do he. Yeah. Done yeah. the hand gesture. Did the hand gesture. He did the hands, everyone. So, he's done the Korean hands as he knows them. He's basically a little too into K-pop. That's what happened here. That's part he of it. He got too into K-pop and thought, I want to be one of them. Genuinely, I am getting so much do uh, don't fuck with cats, yeah? Like, are you getting those vibes? I'm getting those vibes. He, I, I, I feel he, a bit more sorry for this he, guy. He really reminds me of Luca Magnotta. It's like so bad. He's got those vibes, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> if this man invites you around to his hotel room, just do. busy. Don't busy. go. Even I if you are just Self-isolating, yeah. COVID, make any excuse up. This man will fuck your corpse. Hey, you, what you gonna do? Korea boo is coming for you. Hey, you. I know oh when God. I feel a bit Korean. There's <laughs> just times where I think to myself, like, like I see my life flash before my eyes, you right? You thought you were going to die. And, and, like, I've gone from being on the job site offshore, and then all of a sudden I'm watching this fucker with all of these sad backing dancers, and this is now my job. And yeah. I, it, it sort of makes me realise, like, what the fuck happened? What that you going to do? I watch this fucking weird fucker as a job. Here's the thing. You're a diver that now identifies as a YouTuber. <laughs> I have good news, Brian. A fan of yours and a fellow podcaster has a message. I remember Anthony well. True, Geordie is one of my favourite YouTubers and he's a YouTuber that really inspired me. I'm very grateful for the kind words. However, it looks like he's made one about you and Mark Goldbridge beforehand, which hey. does sort of, it dampens the message. Doesn't dampen anything. No, no, it, do, it does, because I want to be the only one. And if, if he's talking about everyone else and saying, oh, they're great too, is it really that special? Well, I'm going to be honest. I also Could you think, delete those? Well, no, well, no, no need to delete them. I, I would say, though, Anthony, it is disappointing for Brian when his episode got 50 and mine got a massive 62 views. Beat you on the views. Beat you on the views. Thank you, Anthony, for your kind words i'll listen to the whole message as will he i'm never gonna slag off lawrence unless he, turned out to be, unless he turned out to be a complete wrong and well, that's a complete wrong. End. To be fair, he's covered himself there. I do appreciate yeah, that. No you can to never be too careful. No need to do the caveat. It, that means he's got a suspicion that I might be a wrong. Well, I don't, well, what are the chances of this being a wrong? End? That's what I'm saying, though, with your little. One little it's what? The beady eyes. It's the beady eyes. You can is always it? beady eyes. You can always tell. Unbelievable. That's what they say. With the if you turned out to be one of them. But we all know he won't be. <laughs> the best thing is he catches himself because he realizes if I play out this situation, one in of my what mind, though? One of what? That is a pe pedo? Is that what he's saying? I guess so. My favorite bit about it is you actually see his eyes realize I've gone the wrong way with this. If you turned out to be one of them. <laughs> he's actually, he goes, oh no. But we all know he won't be. I love do that. We, do we? So you're never going to hear me slack off Lawrence or the true Geordie team because they. Could I have changed my life for the better? Anthony, we really appreciate that. Cheers, Anthony. Um, we love you, bro. You've also changed our lives for the better. And, um... Mm. <laughs> He knows what I mean. He's just pissed off because you did a clip about me before you did a clip there about him. There you go. And it got more views. Yeah, it did get more views. Um, he's actually doing... Did he do a UFC there? I don't want to hear about his ankle break because even before then, Justin Poirier was dominating him on the ground. Did you not see the ground of ground? I tell you what, we've got our newest UFC analyst. I dread to think what the comments will be like because I've done the homework, done the groundwork, tried for a long time at this. They give me a hard time, bro. So if they say to you, oh, he's not allowed to talk about the UFC because he's never been a UFC fighter before. That's we'll really see if they point. say that. Yeah. We'll see if they say that. And if, any, if anything, you think I'm going to get in the comments and say that because you get that. Let's see he how good he would too. do in a Anthony fight. Anthony should get the same treatment. Let's see what Anthony exactly. would do in a exactly. fight. And the problem uh, is, right, Anthony just spewing his views out yeah. there. Yeah, he's never he's, been in the octagon. He's, he's never even refereed. Is a he fight. even allowed to talk about the UFC? Unbelie what a fucking shouldn't be allowed. The thing that sickens me is what casually is. He just sits back and just goes, "Oh yeah, I think I'll just I'll have a view now." Oh he's yeah, he's just copying you. Get, get in the cage, Anthony, and then you can talk about the UFC. Right? Yeah, yeah. win a title. A UFC Ultimate Fighting Champions.
We've got a lot of love for Anthony, so do check this channel out. Um, it is just Anthony. People overcomplicate things, Loz. People overcomplicate them. And uh, credit to him, he's done a breakdown of the UFC fight. I will be checking that out in full after we finish recording this. Yeah, I think this has been a, another great episode of True News. They uh, love it. Even they if they it. do say so themselves. No, but they love it. Thanks a lot to our sponsors, Surfshark. Really appreciate you guys. Head over to the link in the description. Go check them out because it helps us make True News. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs>